Hey everybody, how's it going? Diecast and more here, and today we're going to be doing a review of the Printoff Panther T14R. Uh, this model is technically a 1 to 43 scale model, however it does fit in fairly nicely with other 150th scale models. Uh, so that was the main reason for purchasing the model. Um, but without too much uh, rambling, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the review of the thing. Um... Right off the bat, one of the cool things that I noticed here is the cool uh, swinging door that is there. Uh, that is definitely a nice feature that they added. Uh, here you can see the Panther T14R uh, emblem there, along with on the top of the engine hood there, you can see the print-off decal up here at the top right. Um, on the top of the cab, you can see there is a beacon and a little radio antenna. Spinning the model around, you can see up here, we do have a rear view mirror on both sides of the model, along with two front facing headlights and two front facing caution lights. Uh, the cab also does have a windshield wiper on it. Um, along with another print-off emblem there. I'm going to try to show you all the cab the best that I can. Um, it's a little hard to see in there. But you can see there is a steering wheel, a seat, and some controls that are nicely modeled in the cab there. Um, oh. Next up... Keep spinning the model around over on this side of the model. Again, we can see more engine hood detail. Um, we've got the printed ventilation holes there, along with another uh, emblem there with the model number and manufacturer name. Uh, that pretty much does it for the small details. However, I will spin it around and show you that there are two rearward facing uh, caution lights and a backup light there as well. So um, now that we've got that covered, we'll kind of get into the functionality of the machine. So the machine does spin a full 360 degrees. It is a little stiff on the rotation, but it definitely will, uh, will spin around no issue at all. Uh, the dump height, I know we're kind of struggling to get that in the frame there, but that is the dump height pretty solid for sure um, now I mean there are obviously uh, some small caveats to that now the bed is a little bit smaller so you can't carry as much capacity um, so that is something to keep in mind one other thing I wanted to point out there is a small little uh, recovery hook back here or uh, recovery hole I should say uh, just in case it were to get stuck um, the track frame of the model at the front here, it uh, if, if you can see that hydraulic cylinder in there, it does feature a uh, self-adjusting uh, tensioning system for the tracks, which um, obviously you have to move with your finger to make work, but it does function. Um, the uh, bogies down here is what I believe they would be called. They do um, move and they do spin on the front and rear sets. Uh, it does have a top idler here which does spin also. Um, back here the drive motors those do spin as well. They are individual so uh, in theory you could replicate uh, some sort of a turn but obviously with these rubber tracks uh, it's not going to happen very easily. With that being said uh, the rolling of the model is fairly non-existent. Uh, these tracks are fairly stiff for the most part um, so they don't really want to roll quite as smoothly as uh, you might hope. Um, coming up to the front here as you can kind of see on that uh, on this side track they do kind of get a little uh, little caddy wampus in there sometimes so it doesn't look 100% all the time but uh, with just a little bit of moving around of the tracks you can get it to look pretty pretty much the way it should all the time um, so 
the only other thing really to show you would be uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you just a little bit of detail here. You can see there's a filler cap there for either fuel or hydraulic. Um, there's really not much else to see up top. Um, on the bottom side of the machine, really nothing to see there either. Um, however, you can see the tread pattern there again. Uh, but really nothing to write home about on the underside of the machine. Now. Like I said earlier, this is a uh, 1 to 43 scale machine, technically speaking. Um, I do have my Maruka over here, which is uh, labeled as a 1 to 50 scale machine for a little bit of a comparison now. Um, just looking at them side by side here, you can see the, uh, the printoff definitely has a little bit of a size advantage for sure um, mostly I, at least in my opinion that all resides in the cab and the track frames um, I think that the print off pulls it off totally fine though um, I have posted some pictures on Instagram and to the Facebook page of the print off on a low boy and uh, it fits on there great I mean, as you can kind of see here with the uh, with the head-on shot, they're almost the exact same width. It's almost like the Maruka is a touch wider, but um, <clears throat> you uh, you can see. I mean, it's it's a pretty you know. It's, there's definitely a, a size difference there. Don't get me wrong, guys, but uh, it's not quite as bad as you might think. At least in my opinion. Um, and I know a lot of people will say, well, Kale, you've been 150 a scale or die for a long time. And that is true. And I still, for the most part, stick to that. But uh, I think that with with Prinos manufacturing, whoever they produced it with, that they just maybe got a couple little things out of scale. So that's, uh, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this little review here, guys. I hope everybody enjoyed this, and uh, hope it was hopefully it was a little bit uh, informative for you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment section below, or reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram at Diecast and more, and uh, I'll help you out. But until then, please like, subscribe, and comment, and uh, hope everybody enjoyed the video, and we'll see you all in the next one.